over the Ulduar 25-man uh, loot priority. We're going to be going through a lot of the decent 232 items, which is the base eye level for all the items in Ulduar. But we're mainly going to be focusing on tier, trinkets, weapons, and all of the hard mode items. So we're going to be going over what classes benefit from which items the most and what classes and specs should have priority. And uh, by the end of it, hopefully you have an idea of how good most items are for all the classes. So with that, right before we get started, I would like to shout out my Twitch in the link, uh, link in the description below. And if you guys would subscribe, that helps too. Another thing, all of the stuff I'm talking about, the uh, spreadsheet that I have documenting everything I'm talking about is in the description. And I'm also going to have this Ulduar Google Doc, uh, this tier Google Doc that breaks down some of the damage from each of the tier sets that I simmed. And that obviously is going to play into who should get what tier. So uh, with that, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about in 25 man, I'll just be scanning through these items, calling out the ones that are good. The Leviathan's Coil, this is actually best in slot for bear. Um, it is, you know, an item that can be uh, used for any tank, but should be prioritized to bear because it is best in slot for them. We also have the Leviathan Fueling Manual. I just wanted to mention it because there are not many good offhand options. So the Fueling Manual is actually really good for casters, despite being a normal item. Um, you're going to see that typically most normal items aren't as important. So I'm glossing over a lot of these. Uh, really what's important is going to be items that are best in slot and then the hard mode items. So all of these items are basically just going to be items that are not as consequential compared to the rest of the stuff I talk about. I do want to mention the Steam Collar's Totem. It increases the base amount healed by your chain heal. And that is BIS for Resto Shaman. All right. Up next, we have Boots of Fiery Resolution. Now, these are 252 boots. Very, very good. Um, they are going to be best in slot for quite a few classes. They are best in slot for uh, Demo. They are best in slot for uh, Affliction, Resto, Discipline, Holy Priest, Arcane, and Shadow Priest. And worth noting that uh, some classes like Shadow Priest um, and Arcane can pretty easily switch to another pair of boots that we'll talk about later. And also, likewise, some classes like Fire Mage that are using the other pair of boots could use these as well. Uh, basically, when it comes down to who should get these, they're very good for Demonology Warlock. The high spirit, the high spell power mean they're going to give you a big buff to your whole raid. We'll be talking about Demonology Warlocks throughout in Every time we see a really high spirit item that has really high spell power, it's going to be best on a Demonology Warlock because their spell power, 10% of it benefits the whole raid. Um, so really big there. Next I'm going to mention is actually uh, there's a healer that Resto Druid actually really likes these boots. Um, I mean, before you get too you know excited from that comment, basically all the other boot options in the game have crit on them, and crit is really bad for Resto Druid. So these are actually really good for Resto Druid and, um, you know, potentially could go to a Resto Druid early. Um, I also think it is very good for Affliction and Arcane. So I have Resto, uh, Affliction, and Arcane equal Prio on this pair of boots. Uh, Bis for Arcane, Bis for Affliction. They do have alternatives they can use that are easier to access than, uh, you know, poor Resto Druid has nothing else to use because all the other boots have crit that are close to it. So uh, with that, those are the main players. After that, you know, these are still best in slot for Shadow Priest, so they're pretty good for them. Um, but uh, something like Discipline Priest, Holy Priest, uh, they've got some other options they can use as well. And I would also not really typically give these to Boomy or Fire because they like the other boots a lot more that have crit. So a lot of people on this, but in summary, Demo first, Resto, Affliction, and Arcane next, followed by Shadow Priest, followed by Discipline, and Holy Priest is ahead of Boomy 
who's at a fire. I would heavily recommend following along with the sheet in the description as we're going through some of these items because there's a lot of competition. All right, shoulder pads of dormant energies. These are a much simpler item. This is a leather item with crit on it. Um, because it has crit, we immediately look to Boomy. Um, really the only class that can use it, it is not Bis. Uh, they use tier shoulder uh, in their Bis setup. Next, we have the plated leggings of ruination. These are actually very good. Uh, and while being okay for warrior, they're typically gonna be much better for uh, your, your ret, your DKs. It is not best in slot for warrior. It is best in slot for DK, frost DK, ret. Um, you can typically, whenever you see haste, give items to unholy. Now with that formula, there's actually gonna be a lot of items that end up wanting to go to unholy uh, because of that. Uh, so, you know, despite the fact that this is best for unholy, you could always deviate as we're going through these items, you know, always adjust to your guild. But yeah, typically when you see these haste items, they're best for unholy. So this is best for unholy, then frost, then ret. And we're giving it to even ret before warrior because warrior have armor pen legs they like better. Uh, even though those are contested as well. All right, next we have the Pendant of Fiery Havoc. This is a item that is best in slot for pretty much every caster that needs hit. You can use this in Bis for every caster. Um, there might be some lists, you know, I see a Fire Mage list that doesn't necessarily use it. You might see an Arcane list that doesn't use it, but then lots of other setups will use it. So basically it's Bis for every caster that can fit the hit into their build. Um, in terms of who it should go to, I would recommend, uh, you know, aiming to not give this to an elemental shaman because their bis setup uses a different necklace and they can get away with a different necklace that doesn't have hit on it. I would not give this to a demonology warlock because there's a higher spell power neck they can get. So really you're looking to give this to your boomy, your fire mage, or your affliction warlock. You could give it to a Shadow Priest or an Arcane Mage, but they have uh, some other alternatives. They're a little less dependent on the hit. So um, that is the deal with the neck. Next, we have the Golden Serenite Dragon. This is Bis for Enhance and uh, Combat. I would recommend just either a roll or, you know, whoever needs more. I'd say split prio. Um, there's lots of situations where this would be better for the combat rogue. There's also lots of situations where it would be better for the enhance. If this breaks the enhancement shaman's uh, synced up weapon speeds, they like to match their weapon speeds, it's probably going to be better for the combat rogue. Uh, on the other hand, the combat rogue, maybe a bunch of daggers drop. Maybe they're going to play assassination a little longer than expected. Or, um, you know, lots of things can happen here, but generally I would say split prio. On to razor scale. Uh, and again, those were all hard mode items. I'll try and announce hard mode. As I'm hovering over these items, one thing I do want to correct, uh, this site is, uh, you know, has a lot of the items, right? But sometimes you're going to see some, some items that aren't the right eye level. Uh, I believe, yeah. So like these quest rings are actually 252. All these quest rewards are 252. Um, all of this loot from Algalon is actually 252. Uh, so uh, just keep in mind that pretty much everything is going to be 252 from the hard modes in from Algalon. And that um, besides that, everything is going to be 232 except for weapons, which are 238. So I apologize that the, the tooltips don't match exactly, but this is still the easiest way to check everything without pulling up each item one by one on a wowhead. I also can't get Atlas loot working in in game so there's that okay um on to razor scale most items here don't matter too much i will shout out collar of the worm hunter is surprisingly like good um i don't know why this item is like a lot of helms end up being not very good uh and because the tier is not you know super high eye level um this actually ends up being kind of good it's not on any bis list but yeah keep an eye out this is actually pretty good early these shackles, um, there's not that many good wrists for casters, so these shackles are actually not bad for anyone who can use crit. Uh, 
Um, likewise, the leather version is pretty good for, uh, you know, your Resto Druid or your uh, Boomy as well. The rest of these items aren't quite as good. These Serenite Mesh uh, leg guards are, they're not that close to Biss, but there's just not that many leg options either. So these are pretty good for Hunter early on. Um, the rest of the stuff is not too exciting. Um, the Sigil of Deflection is uh, best in slot for Blood Decay. So don't forget to give them that. And then Living Flame is actually kind of decent. Uh, the Living Flame is typically going to want to go to your Demonology Warlock first because the on use can help give spell power to the entire raid. It isn't the trinket that gives them the most personal damage, but it does help the entire raid the most. After that, Fire Mages can have real hit issues, so a Fire Mage could use this pretty well. But this is a trinket that's actually pretty hard to use because it has so much hit rating on it. So I would recommend trying to give Living Flame to just anybody that can use the hit after you give it to your demo. But a lot of times that will be a Fire Mage that can try and make use of it. There's also a decent amount of Biss lists that use this as Fire Mage. So it's easier to build off of if you play Fire. Um, throughout the video, when I talk about Mage 2, I'll be talking about Arcane and Fire separately. They do gear a little differently. There's also the Frostfire Bolt build that some people do. I'm going to be kind of lumping them in the same category as Arcane as they gear a lot more similarly. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right. On to Ignis the Furnace Master. So on this guy, there's not a whole lot of items here that are too good. I do want to shout out this tank trinket. Give it to one of your tanks. It doesn't really matter which. Uh, when it comes to tanks in Old War, you need both of your tanks, your main two tanks, to be very tanky. Um, you're going to have to switch on several fights. And on a fight like Algalon, you really need both tanks to be able to you know, take big damage. So I would recommend um, gearing up, you know, two main tanks, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily stack everything onto one. All right, um, these other items not too, too important to talk about. We're going to keep going. Uh, obviously, as you're going through items, it's helpful to know that stats like expertise maybe are better for certain classes, but a lot of these items are so replaceable that I'm not going to dwell too much on them, um, focusing mainly on the BIS stuff. All right. On to XT. These shoulders are not the worst, honestly. Um, definitely not BIS, though. Going through the crazed construct ring is actually best in slot for unholy, so don't don't forget to give that them. No one else should want it as much. Sigma of the Earth Shaker is uh, not bad for like a prop pally or a prop warrior. There's actually on the Wowhead Abyss list, they mention this as a Abyss option. So, you know, definitely hook up your warrior with that. Uh, the Sigil of the Vengeful Heart, or Vengeful Heart rather, is best in slot for Unholy DK, so make sure they get that. Uh, the Slenderfall Totem that gives Lava Burst damage, that is not best in slot for Ellie. Um, continuing on, this wand is not a bad hit option for the wand, but there's a better one. Uh, that is from 10-man hard modes. All right, cool. Next, on to the XT hard mode loot. Grasps of Reason. Now, these are best in slot for basically every single caster. Um, and they're weirdly good for some other classes, too. There's not that many good wrists. Uh, so leather and cloth users are interested in these. These are very good for Demo. Once again, very high spell power. Once again, they're also very good for Resto Druid um, because a lot of the other options for wrists have... Uh, well, the next best option has uh, a hit on it. So as a Resto Druid or a Holy Priest, you can actually gain a lot from these. Uh, but of course, it's also going to be amazing for your Arcane Mage. Uh, so those are kind of the best candidates, I'd say, there. Something like an Affliction Warlock, a Fire Mage, Shadow Priest, a Disc, uh, they all can find other items that are, you know, slightly less valuable but to be honest you really you really can't go wrong on grasps of reason as long as you don't give it to a boomy or like a shaman or like um a holy paladin or something uh, boomies have wrists that are way closer than everyone else uh, because they don't like the spirit quite as much as a lot of the casters and they like crit a lot so uh, yeah you can give it to really anybody demo first um a candidate that could go to healers if you want to hook up your healers. All right. Um, 
But amongst the DPS, I'd say Arcane, potentially the best there. Next, we have Gloves of the Steady Hand. Now, these gloves are amazing for a hunter, but they can also be used by some other classes. So they definitely go to Hunter first, and they're Hunter Bis, but they're also best in slot for Ret and Arms. I would give them to Hunter, um, and then between Ret and Arms, either can pick them up. And then Enhance last. Enhance is going to uh, definitely want to run their four set and not typically run Gloves of the Steady Hand in this slot. Next, we have the Breastplate of the Devoted. Not much to say here. It is best in slot for Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin item. Again, not a lot to talk about with the Charm of Meticulous Timing. This is a healer neck. No real specific healer that should get it. Um, in theory, some healers like Disc could use a different neck, but that's typically going to be contested by casters. So realistically speaking, this is just going to be best for any healer. Any healer um, can, can use it just fine. Next, we have Sorthalus Hammer of the Watchers. Now, this is kind of a funny item. Um, now, you might see, you know, Tank Hammer and think, okay, pretty standard stuff. <laughs> but there's a lot of weird variables this time around. Some pro paladins are trying to use a slower weapon. Uh, I still think you should be going for a tanky weapon early for progression, though, even as a prop paladin. This is really amazing for a prop warrior. Definitely give it to a prop warrior if you have one. Um, and then prop paladin. Now it's also good for blood decay, um, and I would give it to a blood decay too. Uh, blood decays can dual wield and ulduar. They are worried about parry haste from Thorum and from the Cat Lady, but um, that's not too much of a concern if they carry a backup weapon, basically. And those aren't even the hardest bosses in ulduar. Uh, kind of the opposite. So um, blood decays dual wielding with this this is not best in it's basically tied best in slot for a blood decay if they dual wield they can actually use the 10 man hard mode uh one hander for tanking as well that actually has higher stamina which, which they really like i think it's called shiver um, but yeah there's that so basically don't forget about your unholy dk either i wouldn't prioritize this to unholy dk because there are so many weapons unholy dk can use and a lot of times no one else will want them but um, definitely can go to Unholy DK if no one else ends up wanting this one. So there is that. On to the Iron Council. Iron Council does not really have much in the way of normal items here that matter too much. Uh, we're gonna go straight into the hard mode stuff. So this is the Biss Hit Cloak. This is actually not that big of a deal. Um, this shouldn't be too big of a drama item. There are three other cloaks that you can use. There's the Algalon Quest Cloak that a caster can get. There's the 10-man Algalon Quest Cloak. And then there's also the 10-man normal, just, or I don't want to say normal, it's still, our Algalon is still pretty hard here, but an item that just drops from Algalon himself that is also pretty close to this 25-man item. So despite it being really good and potentially bis for any caster that could use the hit, it actually is a little bit... Um, less of a drama item than you'd think. And for that reason, I don't think you need to worry too much about this item. I would just give this to, you know, a Fire Mage, a Boomy, an Elemental, a Shadow Priest, any of them. I wouldn't really give it to a Demo and maybe not a Warlock. Uh, your Warlocks might be better off with the Sun Glimmer Cloak and your Demos might be better off with the, um, the Sun Glimmer Cloak. They definitely will be. So... Uh, if you had to choose, maybe Warlocks would be lower on this one, but definitely uh, definitely just kind of even a biggest upgrade situation might be worth looking into because there's just a lot of close cloak alternatives uh, or, or you know different ways to get a cloak if you're killing Algalon in your 10 mans, I guess I should add. All right, next we have Shoulder Pads of the Intruder. Uh, as I'm going, maybe I should make some mentions on how difficult some of these hard modes are. Uh, XT is pretty hard. You need a lot of damage to get that hard mode. Iron Council is also a hard, hard mode. It's pretty difficult. Uh, so some of these items you might not get right away. So Shoulder Pads of the Intruder are best in slot for a lot of classes. Um, they are best in slot for Bear. They're best in slot for Ret. They're best in slot for both specs of Rogue. Um, just pulling up my sheet here. Uh, so yeah, Bis for Ret, Combat, Feral, Bear, and Assassination. 
I do think this is a very strong item for uh, a bear. It does have very high stam. If you happen to have one of your main tanks on bear, I would prio this to them uh, for the hit, the expertise, and the overall survivability. So a big threat and more importantly, survivability option. Um, now your feral cat is really gonna like this as well. I would recommend prioing them these shoulders also. Now, when it comes to rogue, um, you know, especially with these shoulders, uh, I would say rogue has a little more options. So they're a little bit lower on the totem pole than feral. And these do have expertise on them. And a lot of times you might think that the expertise is going to cause an issue for the, the combat rogue if you know about their talents. And that is something that you do want to consider here is that if you do have expertise on the shoulder, it might cause some issues for the rogue. Um, the rogue tier shoulders that they can use in place of these do not have expertise on them. So your combat rogue is going to be lower than assassination. So basically, in conclusion, this item's a little easier to use for assassination because they have more wiggle room with expertise so bear, then feral, then assassination, then combat, then red. Okay, next we have the Greaves of Swift Vengeance. This item is going to be best in slot for a hunter. Technically, it's best for survival and not marksman in a lot of the popular, or I guess the most popular lists, but it's just really good for both. Um, but yeah, give this one to hunter. Uh, then we have Belt of Colossal Rage. Um, so these, these boots are pretty good for enhance, but not bis for enhance to mention. All right, so for the Colossal Rage Belt, this is bis for Frost DK, Unholy DK, Ret, and Arms Warrior. It's also an all right item for a Fury Warrior, but they don't need to hit as much and they can use the Armor Pen Belt from 10 Man, the leather one. So uh, in order of who should get this, um, looking at just pure pure damage, it is gonna be you know Frost and Unholy before Ret in terms of how much it's gained. You're kind of going to see that as we go. Ret just doesn't scale with some of these stats as well as the other classes. Again, feel free to give this to a Ret if you feel like they aren't getting enough, but Rets do have the option to use the Leather Belt as well from 10 Man if they eventually get it. So um, this isn't even in most, it's not even in every Ret Bis list. This isn't some Ret Bis list. So that's why they're lower. They can use the Leather Belt um, in a lot of setups. So Frost and Unholy first, then Rhett, uh, then Arms. Um, arms also can use the Armor Pin Belt, by the way. Okay, next we have the Sapphire of Renewal. Now this is the neck I was talking about before when we were looking at the, uh, the hit neck, and I mentioned that there's some classes that like the higher spell power neck, this is that. So this is gonna be bis for your, uh, for a lot of, you know, any, caster that does not need the hit this is going to be the best neck option even potentially for some healers i don't recommend giving this to healers i think they should stick with that mp5 neck so amongst the casters who should get this one uh demo first is definitely uh, a safe bet because it's going to buff the entire raid again arcane is another safe bet on this one um shadow priest uh, once again uh, and yeah, really anyone after that as well, but those are good candidates to get this item. Once again, there's so many necklaces, I would not really worry about it too much. There is a Snother Spirit Haste necklace from 10 Man. There is a Crit Neck from 10 Man that doesn't have Spirit. The Hit Neck we talked about before, there's a lot of options, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Thing of Oblivion, this is a dagger that an Assassination Rogue can use and no one else. It's important to remember this when we get to later dagger prio, but yeah, assassination rogue, no one else. This data disc, give this to an officer so they can start the Algalon quest, someone you trust, someone with good attendance. Um, it doesn't lead to an item, but you do need this person to complete the Algalon quest, loot the corpses, or like pick up the runes or click them something. Where are they? I think they start showing up over here. Yeah, these sigils. You gotta get these sigils basically. All right. Uh, next, we have Kolagarn. Kolagarn has a couple interesting items. Uh, these Bracers of Unleashed Magic are pretty good. Like I mentioned before, there's no real amazing wrist, so 
Um, these XT risks, grass of a reason, are still much better for most, but these are certainly reasonable for any caster that needs hit. And so really anybody that needs hit should probably hang on to these for a while before they go to the, the other wrists. Other options of items here, um, these decimator arm grades aren't the worst. Temporary item, not too great either. Uh, Rathstone is decent. So Rathstone has an on-use attack power increase and it has crit on it. Uh, in terms of who benefits most from the Rathstone, uh, Enhancement Shamans have really bad trinkets from the previous phase. They're using some goofy stuff, you know, Mirror Truth, the Whetstone. So this is actually a pretty nice increase for them. After that, you could give it to like a Rogue or a Hunter. Uh, it just didn't seem like it really does anything for Rhett. They gain like 20 DPS, so not as good for them. And uh, yeah, pretty much no class with Grim Toll wants to take it off for this either. So yeah, Enhance, and then after that, maybe a Rogue or a Hunter. Iron Mender, just mentioning this one. This is best in slot for every healer that doesn't use a staff. Um, because the Algalon offhand is never going to a healer. I mean, technically, this might be better for a healer. You're never giving a healer a 54 hit rating item that is wasting all the hit. So healers should be on the lookout for Iron Mender if they can't use a shield and if they are going to be using a one-hander. Um, so something to mention there. Also good for caster DPS, although there's a couple hit options in their offhand. Uh, and it also might help them transition better for uh, into the Cosmos item. So honestly, uh, Iron Mender, another item you could look to potentially give to a healer that needs an offhand before potentially a caster. Um, but yeah, also a good option to give to your Demo because it actually will end up giving more spell power than Cosmos uh, because of the spirit. Cool. All right, over to Algalon himself. Algalon has a ton of contested items. Um, crazy. Uh, maybe you could have saved them to end, but I'll just go down the order. All right, Pharos Gloves. Now, these gloves are insanely contested. These gloves are best in slot for Boomy, Affliction, Shadow Priest, Elemental, Arcane, and Fire. And remember, all of these items from Algalon are 252. So remember that. Okay. So in terms of who benefits from these the most, Arcane is the class that like pretty much always can use them. They don't really want to run four set much at all in this phase. Um, and they really like you know, everything about this glove. Affliction and Fire use this really well also, but they are, you know, Fire wants to run four set, Affliction can run four set. So they have more flexibility in their sets they can potentially use Tear Glove better than Arcane can. Now, there's also Boomy that potentially would, would really like this. Um, Boomies do have a Leather Glove they can use, but it's not super close to this, even though it's another 252 Leather Glove that is not the worst. Um, but yeah, for all those reasons, I would say Arcane you know, would benefit the most, then Affliction and Fire, followed by Boomy, followed by Shadow Priest, um, and, and Ellie. Ellie can definitely use these, as can Shadow Priest, but both of them can actually use Offset Leg um, as another alternative, and Affliction has a harder time, and Fire have a harder time using that setup. So, yeah, that is why a little, little easier for Shadow Priest and Ellie to use a different item. I wouldn't give this to a Demo or a Disc or a Holy Priest uh, because they want a different glove coming up. Next, we have Star Watcher's Binding. This is a, uh, another item that you could potentially look to give to healers. Um, the reason for that is the crafted belt. I wonder if it shows up here. It would be the belt of Sash of Ancient Power. This is it. Uh, this is an insanely powerful belt. And because this belt is so good, Actually, a lot of these 252 belts are kind of small upgrades from that hit belt for most casters. And a lot of Bisless are going to look like you don't need the hit from that belt I just showed, the crafted belt. But most casters are never getting Cosmos and Star Shard Edge. A lot of them aren't going to get either. You, you, you won't see either one of them. So you're going to need to make up a lot of hit. This is 41 hit. That's 54 hit a lot of hit to make up 
So a lot of caster DPS should be looking to use the tailoring belt for a while. Because of that, Star Watcher's Binding is always going to be very good for uh, a disc or a holy priest. Now, just like always, definitely can always give this to you demo first. So demo first is, is perfectly fine, followed by disc and holy priest. After that, pretty much, you know, your, your fire mage, your shadow priest, your arcane can all use this. We're not going to go with an Ellie, a Boomy, or a Resto Druid on this one because this leather belt right here exists. They should use that one. The Ellie, the Boomy, and Resto Druid should use this one. Even though um, it might sim slightly higher, the leather one obviously helps spread out the loot. And uh, yeah, that one just makes more sense. Next, we have Solar Bindings. Now, this is an interesting item. Uh, it is best in slot for Assassination, Bear, and Fury. Now, in theory, it would be best in slot for combat, and sometimes it is. It just depends on that expertise again. Combat rogues have a really hard time not using too much expertise, but if they're not getting the shoulder very quickly, um, which one was it uh, from council? If they're not getting the council shoulder very quickly, they have room for more expertise from potentially solar bindings. So that would allow them to use this item pretty well. And then also, um, you know, as long as they're not using any pieces like their tier chest, which give expertise, or they have leftover expertise from phase one, they should be okay. So with all of that, uh, these wrists, I think, are uh, pretty much going to go as follows. I think they're best for assassination. I do think bear have another alternative they can use. Uh, but after that, you could give it to a bear, a combat, or a cat. I would typically give it to Fury a little later. Um, you can definitely give this to Fury early. It is on their BIS list. However, um, if they end up picking up any expertise weapons or anything uh, while they are gearing up, they can end up with too much expertise if they're not exactly following their BIS list. Um, there's a few different places where they might end up with too much expertise. Not only that, it's it's they've got a lot of options through either mail and plate to pick up a wrist option. So um, I would say slightly more interest in giving this to like a bear, a combat rogue, or a cat before a fury. But you absolutely can give this to a fury if your cat and your combat rogue already have the expertise items they need and they can't use this. Um, Next, we have the Star Beaded Clutch. Talked about it before. This is the one that's going to go to our, uh, our Leather Wares and our Ellie. I would once again say that this is potentially a Resto Druid item before the Casters because the Resto Druid does not want to use the Hit Tailoring Belt, and the non-Hit Tailoring Belt is not as good for the healers as the Caster Tailoring Belt with Hit is for the Casters, if that makes sense. So Resto Druid Prio here and then followed up by Boomy, followed up by Ellie. Okay, now we have Boundless Gaze. Now this is a great item for Hunter and Enhance. It is BIS for both. It also is usable by Aret, and they could look to pick it up after. Definitely go Enhancement Prio on this one, because this can actually be so much hit that Hunters can actually have an awkward gearing situation. Um, so sometimes if you give this to a Hunter, it might even it might even put them well past hit cap and cause some issues with their gear. It's always going to be good for enhance. So I would typically say enhance before hunter, followed by red. Next, we have the plain, uh, the plain walker treads. These are going to be, uh, you know, reasonably or realistic bis for your holy paladin and your resto shaman. Technically, there's a cloth boot they want better, but they're pretty much never going to get. So give this the rest of Druids, give this the rest of Shamans, and you can give it to an Ellie afterwards. It's not the worst for Ellie either. All right, we got some tank legs here. These are best in slot for every tank, and every single tank uses them um, and works their tier set around them. Uh, give this to any tank. If you had to pick a tank that likes their tier set the most, it's Death Knight um, amongst the plate wearers. So maybe consider giving it to them last if it, this would mess up their tier. But yeah, great for all the tanks. Next, we have Sabathons of Lifeless Knight, another haste item, another plate item. The same usual suspects for this kind of item. Bis for the DKs, bis for your rep paladin. Uh, in this case, it is also bis for the warriors. Now, 
For the Lifeless Knight Sabatons, Unholy is going to gain the most. Again, it's a haste item. Uh, your Frost DK really likes them as well. Uh, and they're both going to gain more than a Fury, a Red, or an Armswood. I would recommend giving this to Arms last because they have the most potential to use a hit boot that is like male, maybe a leftover boot that no one else needs. Whereas Fury and Red are probably not going to have space in their itemization for that hit rating. All right, on to Cosmos. This is an insane offhand. It is very strong. Don't underrate this thing. This is one of the better items in uh, that you can get as a caster, um, mainly because there is no other offhand that you can use that is higher than 232 eye level. So this will be 252, and the next closest will be 232. So it is a 20 eye level lead on all the other offhands, which makes it this for every caster that can't use a shield. Um, so for the non-shield casters, um, it's really going to come down to what weapons they're going for. So this is not going to be something that we're going to pry out to an Arcane Mage, and that's because Arcane Mages are going to be using a staff from 10-man hard mode, 10-man uh, hard mode Hodier. And so uh, because Ice Core Staff is going to be used by the Arcane Mage, they don't need that offhand. So it kind of depends on where you're itemizing things. It also depends where you're itemizing the 252 staff, uh, the Staff of Endless Winter. So depending on where you're giving that item, it's going to affect who is going to be up for Cosmos. I would recommend not giving Cosmos to Demo. They already are going to get so much that I think it's a little over the top to give them this as well, considering it has less spell power than um, one of the other offhands you can get in here that we already did talk about. Um, so I would recommend you know who should get Cosmos. I think this is great for an Affliction Warlock. I think Affliction Warlocks are the least likely caster to use its staff. I think you definitely can give it to a Fire Mage or a Shadow Priest or a Boomy, but I do think those classes are more likely to equip a staff just based on how much they like crit. Um, and this staff has a lot of crit on it. So there you go. Um, but yeah, and just like Mage is also likely to wear that other staff. So mages are going to be further down the list um fire again fire could still definitely use this affliction great bet um i would not give this to a arcane mage and i would not give this to a healer typically cool on to star shard edge so this is a dagger so it can be used by our mages our priest our boomy and our warlock uh, so pretty much everybody on deck for that this is the best in slot caster weapon for all of our caster dps what this is going to be, you know, a big item, you know, drama item as well. When it comes to who is best, it really comes down to, again, who is going to be getting the staff, who is going to be uh, priod on the rest of the weapons. Once again, it jumps out as a big opportunity for a demonology warlock to buff the raid with spell power because of the high spirit and the high spell power. So this would be great for a demonology warlock again. Um, of course, at any point, you can stop giving items to your Demonology Warlock because they already get so much. Uh, so really just depends how serious your guild is, how you know serious you guys are about giving every item to your Demonology Warlock to buff the whole raid. But yeah, almost everything could go to Demonology Warlock first. Uh, this is no exception. So uh, after Demonology Warlock, again, another great candidate is the Affliction Warlock because they are less likely to use uh the the staff same logic as the offhand uh your fire mage your shadow priest your boomies are also great candidates for this i wouldn't recommend giving this again to an ellie or an arcane the reason we don't want to give this to an ellie shaman is because it has spirit on it and that is a dead stat for them and we don't want to give it to an arcane mage because that staff we looked at before on 10 man is so good that it would be a waste um for arcane to not use it. It's so good. It's so close to Biss that it's just, a, they have to use it. It's just a waste otherwise. Okay. Uh, back to Fang of Oblivion. We actually already talked about this item. This is the Assassination Dagger. I'll talk about it a little bit more later too when we get to Freya. All right, here's Constellus. This is a MP5 caster mace. Now this item uh, I think is a good opportunity to give an item to a healer. Uh, your healer that is not getting Valinir. 
This is best in slot for Resto Shaman and Holy Paladins that are not getting Valineer. And yeah, MP5 makes it a little more efficient to give to a healer than a DPS. You definitely could give it to an Ellie as well after that. Um, you know, Disc, Holy Priest would work too. The reason I have Disc and Holy Priest lower than Resto Shaman and Holy Paladin is because Discs and Holy Priest can use staves as well. Uh, and I haven't mentioned Resto Druid. Resto Druids also really like the hard mode 10-man staff, Ice Core staff, which is another reason why um, they're not going to be as high prio on a mace like Constellus. Cool. So that is the prio for that one. On to Dreambinder. This is your Feral and your Hunter Bis. It is not Bis for Bear, but it is Bis for Cat. Uh, probably would still end up giving it to uh, a bear if they haven't gotten the other weapon yet when it drops just because your cats and your bears are going to use uh, the weapon gives them a big source of feral attack power just based on its uh, its damage cool so feral before hunter and typically bear before hunter as well even though it's not bis for the bear just a much bigger immediate upgrade all right, we've got the Bulwark of Algalon. This is your Bis tank shield. There's another shield that's really good from hard mode as well, 10 man, but yeah, give this to a prop warrior or prop paladin. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you probably only have one in your raid, but if you happen to have two, just give it to whoever. All right, Skyforge crossbow. This is your Bis hunter bow. Give this to hunter first, obviously. After that, give it to assassination before combat and combat before warrior. This is just because there is an armor penetration thrown weapon um that is coming up i don't remember when oh it's from hard mode it's from 10 man uh, but there's an armored penetration thrown weapon that is going to be better for warrior cool next we're going to talk about comets trail this is a big ticket trinket um when it comes down to comets trail it just really comes down to which trinkets uh classes can use well um so for comets trail the the assassination rogue and the unholy death knight sim as the highest dps gain uh followed by enhance followed by combat in feral followed by red so i would put unholy and assassination would be candidates you know right out the bait uh, right out the gate i'd say they're top prio um, you could give it to an unholy or an assassination unholies already do get a lot so uh, as do assassination so both both are good candidates um, enhancement shamans like this quite a bit but don't gain as much uh, from the item and they have many trinkets they can use uh, to kind of hold them over when it comes to combat and feral they gain less than everyone we've talked about uh, especially because they can take some intermediate upgrades for example a combat rogue even though it's not bis if they end up with the 10-man trinket with crit dark matter um, well then this is not going to be as big of an upgrade. So, yeah, I haven't mentioned Rhett yet. They are unfortunately dead last in terms of how much they gain on this. They just gain a lot less than everyone else, unfortunately. So that is Comet's Trail. On to Reply Code Alpha. So this is a quest item that is going to give you a quest reward. There are four of them here. Drape of the Skyborn. You should basically never make this. It's only Bis for Unholy Death Knight. And... Uh, I mean, you just shouldn't make it for them because there's a very close alternative. So pretty much never should make Drape of the Skyborn. Pretty much should, I mean, I don't want to say never. You, If you have a healer that has a horrible ring, you could, but you're typically not going to make the Star Shrine Circle just because the Brand Signet Ring and the Sun Glimmer Cloak are very good and typically outshine, uh, no pun intended, this ring. So... Uh, when it comes to the Sun Glimmer Cloak and the Brand Signet Ring, uh, at first glance, I thought the Brand Signet Ring was just going to be running away with it as the better option, as you know, you have two ring slots, much more likely for a physical DPS to need at least one good ring. This is a great armor pen item. But in some cases, uh, the Sun Glimmer Cloak is going to be uh, a bigger upgrade. So what I honestly would recommend is just go based off of kind of biggest upgrade as you're going through with these two. Typically just make brand signet rings and sun glimmer cloaks. You're typically probably going to be making more signet rings. But um, 
when it comes down to it, there's a lot of alternatives for a lot of these classes. Um, there's a lot of 10 man hard mode rings. There's a 10 man hard mode ring with haste on it and agility. That is, uh, let's see what it's called. It is called loop of the agile for a rogue. It is very close uh, to as good as uh, some of these rings. So if I show you here, loop of the agile, this for hunter, for feral, for rogue, it's actually pretty close. Um, quite a good item. And so depending on what rings your characters have, it could definitely be a bigger upgrade to make a cloak. Uh, however, if you make a cloak, likewise, there is, um, you know, a few other cloaks that are really, really close, like the 10 man Algalon cloak for any caster that needs hit is very close as well. So honestly, I think it's probably just best to go with biggest upgrade. Uh, this is also an opportunity to, you know, kind of course correct RNG and stuff, you know, give somebody who's getting unlucky an upgrade uh, as pretty much every physical DPS will use brand signet ring. Uh, it is best in slot for, I believe every physical DPS except unholy death knight. So pretty much any of them, you can just toss them a brand signet ring if they've been unlucky. And likewise with casters, um, unless their set really needs the hit, you know, most casters can use this. I would not ever give this to a uh, elemental shaman. And I would not give this to a boomy typically because they don't like, well, Ellie doesn't like spirit at all. And boomy doesn't like it as much as the other classes. Gains about half as much as, as some other spirit benefiting classes uh, when it comes to boomy. You'll hear me saying that a few times, um, and I know it's a little confusing because Boomkins do benefit from Spirit, just sometimes about half as much as like, uh, you know, like a Warlock, and um, you know, near half of what a Mage can benefit. Okay, on to uh, the Cat Lady. Cat Lady has, you know, no hard mode or anything like that. Nothing really too exciting to talk about on her loot table. This Holy Paladin relic is not best in slot. I don't believe there's anything exciting stand out from these items. On to Hodier. Hodier has these wrists that I'll mention. These are best in slot in the Marksman set. They're not actually this per se. The armor pen, leather wrists from 10 man, um, the icy or the fluxing energy coils are actually gonna be better from Old War 10 XT for a hunter, on these ones. But sometimes 52 hit rating is too much for hunters. They have a hard time uh, with their hit. They usually get too much. So sometimes this item can actually be better because uh, it's able to reduce some of their hit and it can work a little better in a set. Next, we have Frozen Loop. Just wanna mention Frozen Loop. This is the third best hit ring for a class that cannot use spirit. So something like an Ellie Shaman would do really well with this. Um, On to the items over here. We got Drape of Icy Intent, the hard mode loot. This is going to be best in slot for your rogue. This is gonna be best in slot for Enhancement Shaman, uh, best in slot in some ret lists, but it really is not necessarily the best for ret, despite that. Um, yeah, for this item, you should definitely give it to Enhancement first. They have the least flexibility in the cloak slot. Followed up by Rogue, then Ret. Um, I would give it to, potentially look to give it to a Hunter after that, if really you, you get that many. <laughs> Probably won't. But yeah, Enhance, then Rogue, then Ret on this one. All right, we got these gloves. These are the 252 leather gloves I talked about for Boomy. They're not exceptional. Give them to a Boomy. They might not want them. <laughs> can probably be used uh, for a little bit, but yeah, give them to Boomy. All right, Bindings of Winter Gale. Now this is a caster wrist, and so it might be pretty obvious that these are very good for elemental, but they're also best in slot for enhancement. Enhancement does have more options though, so definitely elemental first, then enhancement here. Next, we have the uh, neck here, the Frigid Strength of Hodier. This is a very good item here. Uh, it is not best in slot for Unholy, um, it is best in slot, however, for Frost DK, Arms, and Fury, and it is sometimes best for Rhett, depending on the rest of their set, if they need a hit or not. I would give this to Frost DK first, 
It's slightly better for them than Arms, slightly better for them than Fury. Arms and Fury have a little more flexibility than the Frost DK on the next slot. Uh, they have more options they can go for. So that's why I would go in that order. And Rhett last. Rhett has a 10-man neck that is very good for them, um, especially if they don't need hit, that they're only behind Unholy for. Okay. On to, okay, we already talked about Constellus. This is the same item we talked about before. Here's Staff of Endless Winter. So I mentioned this uh, briefly. Uh, this is a staff that is going to be best for Fire, Boomy, Shadow Priest, Disc Priest, Holy Priests. These are all classes that either really like the high crit or like some of the stats. Um, you could potentially give this to an Arcane Mage too, but I would really hold out and, and make sure we give the 10-man staff to them instead from hard mode. They should really aim for that one. Um, I would also, you know, you're not going to have the highest spell power with this setup, so this is not the best bet for Demo. And Affliction is not the biggest fan of crit. Um, it's not that crit is bad for Affliction. It's just that it's better for fire, better for, um, you know, Shadow Priest, better for boomies. There's just other classes that like the really high crit more than the Affliction. So Affliction is usually not going to be highest on this one. Okay, there's that. Again, I didn't mention Resto Druid. They also are going to be a class that's really going to want the 10-man staff. This is not best in slot. Keep that in mind, but this is a very strong 252 staff. Um, also a thing to mention, two, staffs are better this phase because there aren't as many good offhands. So unless you get Cosmos, your offhand is pretty much always going to be bad as a caster. And so uh, staffs get a lot better when the offhands are bad. So staffs are not as bad as you're used to. Okay. On to tier. Now, this is where things are really, in my opinion, there's a lot of flexibility with how you choose to do tier. I would heavily recommend, you know, for your guild, really customize the tier here. I've got this in the description below, how strong the sets are individually. Now, just to be clear, this is the individual value of the set bonuses. So you're going to want to look at the items that your characters currently have, consider any old set bonuses they have, and decide, okay, if we give Shadow Priest two set, they're going to gain the stats on those items, and they're going to gain somewhere in the ballpark of 200 DPS uh, on top of that. So go through this document, check how good the, the, the lists are. I already kind of talked about the tier set bonuses in my 10-man video, um, so I won't go over too much detail in them. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to Pryo, heavily 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 recommend you guys customize to your own guild and use tier as a way to you know give people the biggest immediate upgrades you can get by helping them hit their set bonuses aiming for those two sets those four sets on those high impact set bonuses with that though i will give some general outline on maybe some suggestions of how you could hand out tier so as we go through pretty much every tier slot um, a lot of times we're going to be giving tier early to tanks. The reason for that is because the content hits really, really hard, and having a geared tank makes a massive difference on a lot of the harder fights like Iron Council and Hard Mode and Algalon. So we're going to see a lot of tank prio here. You absolutely do not need to follow this tank prio if you're not planning on doing those harder modes anyway, and if your tanks are fine. But early on, even if it's not best in slot, it could be helpful to pass extra geared over to your tank. So in this case, Prop Paladin would be a good candidate for this chest. Uh, the only, like the main chest they want instead comes from Algalon. And this is gonna be the case for all three plate tanks. The main chest they want is from Algalon 10 man. And early on, that's gonna be pretty hard for a lot of guilds to, to be doing in their 10 man. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get there. And so, I think giving an early tier piece is really going to help uh, smooth out your progression, even though it will get replaced. So Prop Paladin is a good bet for the chest. Disc Priest, the chest is Bis, and their set is phenomenal, uh, giving them spell power when they shield people. They are an amazing candidate for this chest. I think Disc Priest getting an early tier set could help your guild during progression quite a bit, especially on Algalon. Disc Priest is very important in Old War. Um, Shadow Priest also loves their tier. They are a great candidate as well as Warlock. Rhett can also get their tier early. Um, those are all great bets. Now, Demonology, I would not recommend getting this tier chest. It actually doesn't have very much spell power on it. 
Um, not great for a demo support set. Also, um, Holy Paladin is going to be lower on tier. The tier eight is best in slot for Holy Paladin, but their tier seven is so strong that they really need a lot of pieces at once to take it off. And that makes it a little awkward to prio them early tier. Um, so basically keep an eye out for your Holy Paladin, potentially move them up on tier when it's time to, uh, you know, break off their set all at once. But yeah, they do not going to be first just because they do need to take off their tier seven all at once. Next, we have the uh, the Wayward Protector token. So uh, obviously Hunter, Shaman, and Warrior is typically less contested. Uh, this is not best in slot for Prot Warrior, but again, a good temp upgrade for them. Great to give it to them. Our Resto Shaman, this is really gonna be up to a decision in your guild too. The Resto Shaman four set is phenomenal and it gives you uh, reduced cast time on your chain heal, which equates to a ton of haste. The Wowhead Guide says it's 400 to 450 haste. So when you think about that, that that's a lot of stats. That's an insane set bonus. So I think Resto Shaman could be a candidate for an early tier set. Of course, if you want to focus more on pumping out the damage, um, Ellie is an enhancer, a great candidate. Elemental Shaman really likes their tier. Enhance really likes their tier. The thing about Enhancement Shaman, though, is that they are going to have a harder time swapping out their tier because they have been running tier from the previous phase. So your Enhancement Shaman is going to have, um, you know, they're going to have to break their four set tier seven. They're going to lose a lot of damage. It's a little awkward. Ellie does not care about their tier seven set bonuses at all. Makes Ellie an easier candidate. So I would go Prot Warrior, potentially Resto, potentially Ellie after that. Enhance and Fury both really like their set. Fury could be a little easier to slot in as well for the Enhance. Um, and both of them are going to use their chest uh, in, in their BIS setup. Arms is a little bit lower down. Arms does not gain as much from their tier set, but it's still good, still could go to an arms. And I've got a hunter dead last. Now hunter's in a tough little situation here. Um, and it's something I'll be mentioning throughout. I would heavily recommend when it comes to hunter and ret paladin, you guys keep an eye out because when we're looking at purely the DPS numbers, a lot of times Hunter and Rep Paladin get outshone in terms of how much they scale, how well they scale, um, especially as Hunters are still playing survival this tier. Um, and by, the, by and large, definitely don't have to. But uh, because of that, uh, Hunters are going to be last on tier here. Their tier set bonuses are not as good as other classes. Um, they have some alternatives they can use. But I would definitely keep an eye on your hunter and look to toss them some extra gear when you can uh, because they are going to be low on tier and they're not crazy high on many items besides tier as well. They have a lot of their loot is very contested. So keep an eye out for hunter. But yeah, unfortunately, they're going to be bottom on tier here. It is not bis and it is not their set bonuses are not very good. Next, we have the leg plates of the wayward vanquisher. Um, so when it comes to blood decay, uh, they are, this is a bis chest and you want to gear out your tanks early. So it makes sense to give it to them. Uh, you could definitely give this to a bear too for an early power spike if it's a main tank of yours. After that, it is best in slot for your fire mage. It's best in slot for your arcane mage, uh, your resto druid, your boomy. Uh, it is not bis, however, for uh, your your Rogue, your Cat, your Frost, or your Unholy. So you are going to want to look to, you know, your, your Fire Mage, uh, your Arcane Mage early on, or maybe even uh, really, really just one of those. Uh, a lot of people just don't use the chest. Boomy does not use it. Resto does not use it. Rogue does not use it. Cat does not use it. Frost and Unholy do not use it. So sorry I repeated myself there, but just to be clear, it is Bis for Fire, Resto, Boomy, and Blood DK. Uh, as well as your DKs. Don't forget the DKs too. Oops, I cut off my little comment here. As well as your Frost and your Unholy DK. So very good for them. Uh, and they should 
be looking to get that pretty early. Now you can delay the frost in unholy tier because this chest is something you can buy. Chest and helmet you can buy with conquest. So it can definitely affect how you end up prioing your gear. Um, but you're probably going to want to look to at least try and save some players some conquest by handing out the best chests where you can. Um, but definitely an opportunity to look for a set bonus or a short term gain on the chest in the head because you can buy it with conquest. All right, Thorum. Um, I'll mention the belt. This belt of the betrayed is best in slot for marksmen and it's basically best for survival. I mean, there is a better belt from 10 man, but it has expertise on it and it's very contested. So it's going to be hard to get. Um, but yeah, very good for Hunter. Uh, make sure they pick that up. You also have Scale of the Fates now, or Scale of Fates. This is insane for Arcane. Definitely an Arcane Prio item. You're going to find this on a lot of BIS lists. It is BIS for Boomy, Shadow Priest. Uh, not Elemental. It's not an LE's list, but it's BIS for uh, in some fire lists, uh, Affliction. Basically, when it comes to fates, I think it's definitely arcane first. They burst really hard. They do well with this trinket. They sim the most with this trinket. Um, so I would definitely go arcane first. Shadow Priest and Fire are great candidates as well. I wouldn't give this to a Boomy. And in fact, I would even, it's even this for Resto Shaman. I would give it to a Resto Shaman before a Boomy. The reason for that is there's this trinket, this plea trinket, is actually very good for Boomy and performs in, in Sims equal to scale of fates, especially in longer fights. Uh, so I would recommend, uh, you know, you can give it to a Boomy, but I really wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend Arcane, uh, number one, followed by Shadow Priest, Fire, you know, maybe an Affliction in there. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would suggest. Then we've got Volmir. Volmir is very good, but not Bis for anyone. Uh, Volmir can be used by quite a few classes. It is a good option for an Enhance or a Frost DK. Um, you could argue that because this doesn't match up with any of the BIS um, for Enhance, that maybe it should go to Frost DK, but it's one of really only two offhands that an Enhance can even use. So I would say split Prio between Enhance and Frost DK on, on Volmir. This is, um, you know, a very good item for both of them, but yeah, when it comes down to it, the Enhancement Shaman is going to have uh, less options. It is not BIS for either. Uh, it is not BIS for any of these classes we talk about. Unholy can use it really well also. Um, and then Prop Paladin can also use it, but I would hold them for last. So Enhancer, Frost, DK first, followed by Unholy, followed by Prot. Okay, on to the, uh, let's do tier first, shall we? All right, tier helm, another item that we are getting from Conquest. So this one doesn't matter as much. Um, now, for the crown of the Conqueror, this is BIS for Prop Paladin, so great to give it to them first. It's even their BIS. Um, it's great for Disc Priest again, great for Shadow Priest, BIS for them. It is not BIS for Affliction, Ret, uh, Demo, uh, and it is bis for Holy Paladin, but again, you got to check and see if they can work it into their set. So definitely give it to those earlier classes I mentioned first. Uh, see if the Holy Paladin can use it. If not, maybe give it to an Affliction or a Ret as an upgrade. I would tend to not want to give this to a Demo uh, simply because I think that the, uh, the Demo you're going to want to hold off and give a Spell Power item to. Uh, a higher spell power item for sure. Next, we have the Crown of the Wayward Protector. This one, Bis for Prot Warrior. Makes sense to give it to them if you run a Prot Warrior. Uh, Resto Shaman again, great tier bonus. We're going to keep kind of referring back to a similar order, but obviously giving some context on if the item is Bis or not. This is still Bis for Ellie. It's Bis for Fury. It is Bis for Arms. These are all classes that use it pretty well. Uh, not Bis for Hunter. Uh, and not this for Enhance. I would give this to Hunter before Enhance, though, because we're giving Enhance the Offset Helm first, and um, I guess it, it might it may depend on the exact set bonus situation, but especially if the Shaman is able to wait a little bit longer for their tier, their tier Helm is not one of the better options to run anyway. So 
Uh, and and Tear Helm is not too bad for Hunter. It helps, especially if they're high on hit. It's quite a quite a good option. All right, next we got the Crown of the Vanqu or Wayward Vanquisher. Now that is going to be uh, an item that's going to want to go to Blood Decay first. It is their Biss. Bear, it's their Biss as well if they don't PvP. Uh, so good to go to Bear as well. Following that, it is Biss for Fire. It is Biss for Cat. Those are great candidates to get it. It is Biss for Frost Decays as well as Resto, Sham or Resto Druid, rather. Um, and Resto Druid's set is very good. I know we're not used to giving tier to Resto Druids, but it is, it is good for the Resto Druid as well. Now, after that, you know, you've got your Arcane Mage, Unholy DK, Boomy, uh, your Combat Rogue. These classes do not use Tier Helm, so they're going to be lower at Pryo, as it's not their Biss. Again, all of these classes can use it temporarily, uh, but because you might see some off, you know, off piece items, 252s dropping early, um, because some of the hard modes are pretty easy, you will be able to actually. You know, it will matter that you prioritize the players that are actually going to use their items long term. But again, it doesn't matter as much with the helmet and chest because you can buy it with Conquest. All right, let's talk about Embrace the Gladiator. This is another really big contested item. Um, this big chest armor I do think is quite good for a bear, especially if you're worried about survivability. So you can definitely give the first one to bear. However, it is exceptional as well for combat. Combat has a really hard time using their tier chest. Their tier chest has way too much expertise and it actually is like almost unusable amounts of expertise because they also have expertise in their talents. So I really recommend a pretty high priority for combat as well. So bear if you got one, um, but otherwise a combat rogue followed by assassination. Uh, I do think it or followed by assassination, feral or hunter. I think you can give it to anyone after the combat. Uh, between Assassination, Feral, and Hunter. I would uh, give it to Rhett last after all of those guys, even though it technically is on Rhett's list. They just really should be using uh, tier realistically. Um, and their BIS list is a little unrealistic that um, a lot, or at least the WoW head full BIS list is not quite achievable for, for Rhett, unfortunately. All right. We have Pauldrons of the Combatant. This just doesn't really matter. Give it to a healer, Resto Shaman, H Pal, whatever. They use tier. They don't really want it anyway. Just give it to whoever. Not a very good item. Okay, on to the Warhelm of the Champion. Now, this is a best in slot item for a few classes. This is this for Rhett, but it's very close to the male helm for Rhett. So they're going to be bottom again. Poor Rhett. Uh, that's why I mentioned again keep an eye on your Rhett, keep an eye on your Hunter. And uh, if you feel like they're not getting enough, you know, maybe throw them. From a bone here and there, because again, if we're looking at prios, they're going to be lower on a lot of stuff just based on scaling, who gains the most. Uh, they're really more of classes that are going to be kind of picking up scraps. And depending on the RNG of your raid, they may not be getting enough. They may be getting a ton. They may be getting lots of stuff because they can they have a decent amount of flexibility. Um, so there's that. But yeah, the War Helm is going to be uh, best in slot for Unholy and Rhett. So Unholy before Rhett, uh, but definitely give it to Rhett still before your Warriors and before your um, your Frosty Ks because they use Tier Helm. All right, Fates Clutch this is a tank ring. Biss for every tank. Every tank's going to use at least this one in combination with some other ring. Give it to any tank, doesn't really matter. We already talked about this bow. It was on Algawan as well. Uh, Hunter Bryo, if you don't remember. All right, here's a 252 shield. This is a very nice shield for every shield user that is a caster, but it's especially good for Ellie because there's a hard mode shield that has MP5 on it. So definitely go Ellie first, then Resto or, or Holy Paladin. It doesn't really matter which after that. Okay, there's our Thorum loot. On to Freya. Freya is going to have some weird gloves here that are actually quite good for Unholy. These are best in slot for Unholy, so make sure they get those. Um, when it comes to the tier, we got tier legs, the leg plates of the Wayward Conqueror. Now, these are not bis for uh, your Prot Paladin. Uh, we haven't gotten, have we gotten to? Yes, we're from Algalon. The Algalon legs obviously drop from Algalon, which means your tanks already need to be really tanky uh, to even get that loot. 
So I would definitely not be too afraid to give a tier leg to a tank because you kind of need to beef them up to even get through Algalon. Uh, there's no point waiting for this for your legs as a tank and bypassing a big upgrade when it's preventing you from even killing the boss. So once again, we're going to be giving legs to tanks. A uh, prop paladin again, definitely a good candidate for the first leg. Disc, uh, Shadow Priest, Affliction, Ret, all could definitely use a leg. In terms of who it's, you know, technically bis for Affliction, it is on their bis list. Uh, Demo uses it in their bis. A Holy Paladin using their list. Only really just Ret doesn't use it in their list, but they still could. They still could use it. So and this is a great leg tier token. Everyone's gonna want it. Um, just try and use it to finish up your sets. Uh, and yeah, great for pretty much everyone. But if you follow your kind of theme of maybe prioritizing disc or shadow priest for the really good sets, that would make sense to keep following that theme. Finish off your set bonuses. All right, on to the next token, the Wayward Protector. Once again, Prot Warrior for the same reasoning. Um, your Resto Shaman, uh, your Ellie, your Fury. Now, your Ellie's a little lower here because they definitely can use uh, offset legs in other combinations. And I would also make sure to bump up Enhancement pretty high here. Um, so Enhancement is going to be BIS for them. So I would definitely look to give it to a, you know, your, your tank potentially first, but then Resto Shaman, Enhance, Ellie. These are all great candidates. Um, Fury Arms, their tier leg is really, really, really bad. Hunters is pretty bad too. So between Fury, Arms, and Hunter, it's kind of a crapshoot. Fury and Arms have better set bonuses, but their legs are horrible. And Hunter's leg is maybe slightly better, but their set bonuses aren't as good. So just kind of figure that out. <laughs> Biggest upgrade after that. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, you know, that's why. Those are, those are the options, and Ellie is lowest because Ellie can use offset leg. We're about to talk about the offset leg Ellie can use, but that's why they're lowest, if that makes sense. Okay, next we have Blood Decay. Uh, blood Decay, uh, or why well, I say Blood Decay, <laughs> that's not the name of the token, but that is the prio for the token. Blood Decay, once again, great candidate for the legs. Same reasoning as before, not going to have the bis legs until after you kill Algalon. Bear also can use the legs really well. Um, the offset legs, we're not going to pry out a bear. So this is actually fine to, to give bear these legs as well to keep them for a while. Um, unless you decide against uh, passing up the offset legs on them. Then we're going to look at the fire mage. Uh, fire mage runs their legs in bis. So does the, uh, or they also run the four set, just like all these other classes. We've got resto, we've got. Boomy, we've got Blood Decay, Frost Decay, and Holy Decay. So the classes that do not want the tier leg are Cats and Rogues, don't use it in their bis. Everybody else uh, does, except for our Frost Decay uh, and our Unholy. So our Frost and our Unholy should be lower because they are not using their, their tier leg in bis just like our rogue and cat um, not using it either. Okay, so blood, bear, then fire, then arcane, resto and boomy uh, are good in the middle there too. Okay, next we have the off pieces, the hard mode stuff. Drape of the sullen goddess, not much to say here. This is just a healer item. Give this to a healer that is not a resto druid. I mean, you still kind of could give it to a Resto Druid, but yeah, Resto Druids gain the least uh, because of the crit. There's not really a ton else that they could get. You could try and throw them maybe an Algalon Cloak one of these days, but yeah, because of the, the crit, it is a little bit worse for the Resto Druid. Leggings of the Enslaved Idol. These are best in slot for a few casters. They are bis for Arcane only, I guess I should say, but there are bis setups for Ellie and Shadow Priest. So I would look to give this to Ellie or Arcane first, definitely Arcane first, but
but then look to give it to Ellie or Shadow Priest because both of them can actually use this pretty well. Definitely don't disenchant this or anything crazy like that. This is still very usable by Ellie and Shadow Priest. Cool. Next, we have a tank glove. Uh, BIS for your non-DK tanks. So don't give this to DK tank. Give it to your prot pally or your prot warrior first and give it to DK later. DK uses tier glove in that slot. Uh, so there's that. I'd also say that maybe give this to a prop paladin before a prop warrior, just because the prop paladin has a worse tier set bonus than prop warrior. So there's another thing to think about. This is a tank neck. Give it to any tank. It doesn't really matter. They all use it. When it comes down to your tanks, like I say, you really just need to balance them out so you can kill Algalon. You know, just kind of balance out the items here. A lot of these 252s are just better than a lot of the other options. When it comes to tank stuff, there probably shouldn't be too much drama anyway. So should be easy enough. All right, then we have Blade Twister. Now this is the BIS dagger for our Assassination Rogues and it's the BIS offhand for combat. Assassination Rogues actually run two of these. Um, so the question is wh how should they be distributed? So there's another item that should really be kept in mind, which is the 10 man, uh, what is it, Thorum? Combatant's Boot Blade. Combatant's Boot Blade is almost the sa exact same item. You see Haste, Attack, Power, Crit, and this dagger is Attack, Power, Haste, Crit. It's the same item, it's the same speed. Assume it's basically the same thing. It's basically the same. They sim pretty close. So what this means for us is, between those two weapons, we want our Assassination to get the first one of them that drops, our Combat to get the second, and our Assassination to get the third. If you have multiple assassinations, the, you know, give them their first dagger first, then give combat their offhand, then potentially give a second one to an assassination that already received one of those daggers. Um, that's how you do Blade Twister. Okay, on to Dreambinder. This, uh, I believe I talked about it with Algalon. Yep, it is the Feral Staff. So uh, not much to say there. On to Mimron. Mimron has Pandora's Plea. This is a really good trinket for Boomy and Mage. I would recommend uh, specifically Arcane Mage. But yeah, Boomy and Arcane Mage. Now, it is really good for Arcane. It looks like an Arcane trinket because the Int. But I have seen it simming particularly well for Boomy. And because Arcane or Pryode on the other trinket we talked about, um, definitely could make sense to give this. Or actually, have we talked about it yet? Yeah, we've talked about it. It was Scale of Fates. But because uh, Arcane Mage was prior on that one, this one I think should go to Boomy. And it is simming in, you know, at least with, for longer fights, dead even with Scale of Fates. So uh, to me, it really seems like an efficient use of that item to give it to a Boomy. But of course, Arcane is good as well. After that, kind of whoever wants it, I guess. Um, okay. We've got this Insanity's Grip. This is just an option for... Uh, an enhance or a combat rogue just another option for them whoever needs it most can snag it up all right on to tier gloves now the gauntlets of the wayward protect or conquer some of these are going to be not as uh, contested there's a lot of offset gloves going on so for our glove slot the only bis glove on this token is actually holy paladin warlocks use offset gloves uh Priests use offset gloves. Prop Paladin will use offset glove eventually when they get it. And uh, yeah, Rhett uses offset glove. Uh, so the candidates who are best to, to go with this one would be something like Prop Paladin, you know, Holy Paladin, because it is BIS for Holy Paladin. You could even honestly give this to a Rhett early, try and help them get their set. Um, Otherwise, you can try and just complete a Shadow Priest or a Disc list, or Abyss, even though it's not going to be their setup. I would say it's probably closest to Abyss for Rhett um, because they're going to have to sit on their tier for a while. But like I mentioned, it's really easy for Shadow Priest to run offset leg, in which case they would use these gloves. So good for Shadow Priest too. I would uh, lean against giving these to Demo because you're going to give them spell power gloves first. 
and Affliction as well is lower on the tier glove. It is not their bis. Okay. Next, we have the last glove token. Again, this is best in slot for Blood DK, so it should go to them. Best in slot for Bear. Uh, best in slot for our Resto uh, Druid as well. And, uh, oops, I think I skipped... Did I skip Warrior? I skipped Warrior. Let me go back. Let me back up. Let's do Warrior first. So you can definitely still give this to a Prot Warrior for early tankiness. This is Biss for Resto Shaman and Enhance, so make sure they get that next. Uh, Ellie is still a good candidate because they can run Offset Leg as well, so they would be a good candidate for the Glove. Um, Fury, Arms, and Hunter. They, The Fury does not run the... Uh, excuse me, the arms does not run tier glove. The Fury Warrior does. So the Fury Warrior should look to pick up the glove even before the Ellie. So we've got Prot, then potentially Resto, then Enhance, then Fury. All of that, Ellie can make great use of them. Uh, and then arms is a little bit lower because it's technically not their best, but they can still use it. And then Hunter is last once again unfortunately, but it's not their biz. Okay, uh, back to Blood Decay. And uh, Blood Decay before Bear on the Vanquisher token. Uh, and your Bear can use other gloves, but I would honestly think, I think Tier Glove is a fine choice for them here because it's pretty tanky. And there are some other gloves they can get for more threat, but I think these are fine for, for a tank uh, to sit on as well. Resto Druid really like, uh, will use their glove and so do our, um, you know, our assassination rogues. The combat is going to be a lot lower here. Uh, we really just want to give just assassination uh, for this one because our combat rogue is going to use offset gloves, uh, so they're going to be, you know, further down the list. Our our combat guys. Now uh, we do want to give this to Cat because it is bis for them. It's bis for Frost Decay as well. It is not bis for Fire or Arcane, but it can help give them a nice early set. But yeah, Fire, Arcane, Boomy, these are all classes. Uh, Combat Rogue, Unholy, these are all classes that could use the early tier, but it's not their bis. Okay. Let's talk about Titan Skin Cloak. This is Bis Tank. Again, doesn't really matter who gets it. Give it to one of the tanks. Um, not a lot to say about this one as well. When when the 252 items are so much better than everything else, it's, it's just going to be a big gap. Doesn't really matter what they had before um, in some cases. But yeah, you could go biggest upgrade as well. All right, Crown of Luminescence. This is the offset helmet. This is going to be best in slot for Arcane Mage, uh, Demo, uh, Boomy, and Affliction. I think this is definitely best for Demo because they gain the most from the spirit and the high spell power. After that, it would be great for an Arcane Mage. I would say Arcane because they're less a fan of the four set than like a Boomy or an Affliction. Boomy and Affliction can both use four set, especially Affliction. So I have Affliction lowest on this of the BIS members because they have the easiest time using their four set. Whereas Arcane doesn't want to force it as much. Okay. Bedlam wrists. These are another haste wrist, uh, plate wrist. They are best in slot for unholy, ret, frost, arms, and kind of tied bis for fury. Excuse me. I would give it the fury last of all these, but yeah, definitely unholy first. Uh, I think ret could be your next bet as well because. Frost DKs can get a nice armor pen wrist. So yeah, Unholy, then Rhett, then Frost, then Arms, then Fury. Nice pair of wrists here. All right, Conductive Seal, this is an insane ring. You're going to see this on basically every single caster bis list. Uh, it is so good that it is bis for even classes that don't use Spirit. You'll see Elemental Shamans having this on their bis list. Again, for the sake of efficiency, I would not recommend ever giving this ring to a Holy Paladin, a Resto Shaman, or an elemental shaman. They don't use the spirit at all. I would also not recommend giving this to healers because there are some MP5 rings they can use instead. Um, 
I would stick this one mainly to casters. Amongst the casters, it is best for Demo, because it is a very high spell power item. It's also very good for mages, shadow breeds, and afflictions. I do think uh, your druid gains a little bit less, your boomy, than some of these other classes, because again, they don't benefit quite as much from the spirit. And there's also some other crit rings they can use a little better than some of these other casters. So I would recommend, uh, you know, Demo first, and then maybe an Affliction, a Shadow Priest, or a Mage. Uh, but amazing ring, very, very strong. All right, this Delirium Touch, um, maybe some sort of Rogue Trash set or something, uh, maybe a Haunter Stat Stick if they don't have a great two-hander. Nothing really jumps out as, as to why this would be particularly good for anyone else. Okay, Star Shard Edge. Um, there you go as well. I mean, I guess you could try and use this for a combat rogue too in a, in a fist set, but yeah, not, not typically an ideal choice there. All right, we have General Vezax. Now, and I already did D-tier gloves, good. General Vezax. Mm, Idol of Corruptor, just to mention, it is bis for your tank bear. Make sure they get it before your, your feral cat if you have two. Not a lot to really say about some of these items. Um, I mean, these shoulders aren't completely terrible, but yeah, not a lot to say here. Let's go into uh, the wand. I'll mention the wand. This wand is pretty good for any caster that doesn't need hit. Typically the second best wand, not super big item. Wands don't have too many stats on them anyway, so not really a big deal, but something to think about. In terms of who should get it, I mean, Maybe Arcane Mage, because they like hit the least. But really, anybody could, could pick this up. All right, we got Hand Wraps of the Vigilant. This is your high spell power glove. This is going to be your Bis for your Demo Warlock. Um, this is Bis for your Disc Priest, your Holy Priest. Uh, so these Hand Guards of the Vigilant are uh, really good for them. And I would recommend, again, Demo first, and then... You know, potentially a healer. You can give this to a caster, but the casters are going to benefit more from the Algalon gloves, and then some of them are going to be using their tier. So uh, definitely, you know, an opportunity to potentially give an item to one of these healers. Uh, on to the, and, and also another thing to mention, a lot of the casters don't really want these that much, and they're much worse than Pharaoh's gloves for a lot of the casters. Okay, on to Vestments of the Blind Denizen. Give this to your Resto Druid or your Boomy. Both use this as their off piece. Um, so just whatever works best with the tier. This is Bis for Boomy and Resto Druid, and they both use it as an off piece. All right, Pendulum of Infinity. Now this neck is very strong and potentially usable by a lot of classes. It is Bis for Enhance, Hunter, Rogue, Feral, uh, and it is on some ret and some bear bis lists. It is going to be the most powerful on enhance and assassination. Those are the two classes or specs that benefit the most. After that, you can give it to a combat rogue or a hunter. Again, feel free to bump up hunter if you feel they're not getting enough. Um, follow that with ret. Uh, ret has at least a little better claim to it, I feel, than a fury or an arms. But Rhett is going to be pretty happy with the 10-man neck. Um, they should be pretty happy. They might not be, but they should be. <laughs> with the 10-man strength and haste neck. But yeah, definitely enhance and assass first, followed by combat and hunter, and then kind of the rest. Typically, Rhett before bear. I don't think bear needs this. I think they should just go for the tank neck instead of taking a really contested neck. And then, uh, yeah, your fury and arms have some other options they can use instead of this. They have a lot more flexibility, so they should go last on this one even though it can be potentially bis for some DPS warrior lists. Okay, we have Flare of the Heavens next. This is a very uh, contested caster trinket, incredibly powerful. Uh, its proc gives 900 spell power, which, if you may have guessed, <laughs> would also mean that the entire raid would gain 96 spell power with it going to a demo. So this is very strong for a demo and would potentially be uh, maybe even, maybe not noticeable, but 
impactful enough that it might matter uh, in, in killing things in your guild because it is a lot of spell power for the snapshot of the demo. 96 spell power across the entire raid is, is pretty insane. So demo first. Following that, again, this is a there's going to be small differences between the sim, but this is a very contested item. I would really recommend giving this to a, a really good player over the exact stat, you know, sims. Ellie, Boomy, Fire, and Shadow Priest all sim pretty close. And Affliction is just a little bit under uh, because they do really well with illustration. But really, you can give this to anyone. If there was one class I would maybe recommend against, maybe be something like an Arcane Mage, just because they already are prio on scale of the fates they're prio on a lot of offset pieces and the arcane mage is gaining the least of all these classes on the trinket if they roll up with pandora's plea and uh the scale of fates so they already have a couple new trinkets they can get so that is why i have arcane lower and this is harmful spells so only cast your dps here all right on to yog saran final boss Talk about tier while we're at it. So for the tier, um, shoulders, decent amount of classes do use their shoulder. For the first token, we've got Paladin. Paladins use the token in their bis. So do Disc, Shadow Priest. Uh, Holy Paladins use it as well. So those are going to be your top you know, candidates there. Um, not technically bis for Ret or Affliction, but they both can use it to decent gain early on. And I would again put Demo later because Demo is going to be getting offset pieces I have demo again really low on tier because they're going to be getting the offset pieces as they drop and a lot of contested loot as well so demo is pretty much bottom the whole way through uh, a little higher on their legs though uh, because they are part of their best set the legs and the chest okay next we have the warrior token piece again uh, warrior these shoulders are bis for them resto shaman these are bis they have a great set ellie um, i would put ellie a little bit lower because Ellie's can actually use an offset shoulder in some setups early on. It is definitely not Biss, and I'm not saying it's a Biss setup, but there is a 252 shoulder that no one else wants that only Ellie's are going to get um, that you know you may as well take advantage of. Uh, this is the, the shoulder is called Observer's Mantle. Oh, sorry, correction. It is a 239 uh, shoulder not a 252, but it's an Algalon 10 min shoulder that no one else can really use. Uh, so uh, an option for sure. Um, and Fury also really likes the shoulders and they are quite good for them as well. They are bis for them. Uh, Enhancement Shaman, uh, they do use their shoulders as well. They're also a candidate. You can see a lot of people on this token uh, bis here. You're going to see arms. It is not this. Arms uses a 10-man uh, shoulder uh, instead, hard mode. And the uh, hunters, of course, use a 10-man hard mode shoulder as well. So they're, they're down at the bottom. Okay. Um, next, we have Mantle of the Wayward Vanquisher. Once again, best in slot for Blood DK. And give it to a bear tank as well. Um, bear tank also can use the offset shoulder we talked about, so don't have to give it to them if you they have already gotten um, the uh, Iron Council shoulder. But that's pretty unlikely that you're going to be killing hero, you know, hard mode Iron Council super early. So it is nice to give them an early shoulder, so they're tankier. Uh, Fire Mage, and also uh, one thing I want to mention. If your tanks are plenty tanky for Algalon, you're clearing Algalon, you're doing okay, you can bypass all tank prior. As soon as your tanks can take down Algalon without dying and everything is okay and you're doing Iron Council, your tank's not falling over, you can bypass all prior on these contested items, especially for bear. I know most guilds don't run a bear uh, or won't run a bear, um, but... For the ones that do, you know, you do want to stack your bear until they're tanky enough, but then afterwards you don't really need to keep giving them as much gear and can, you know, start giving back to all the DPS. Okay. Um, so yeah, for the shoulders, blood decay and bear, uh, the shoulders are bis for fire, arcane, unholy, frost, resto, druid, and boomy. 
So that puts Cat and Rogue at the bottom. That puts um, everybody else ahead of them. Once again, Fire gaining a ton from their set, Arcane gaining a lot from their two set, uh, being good candidates. So a lot of options there on that token. Okay, uh, last few items here. Uh, Garona Guys, just to mention, this is pretty good for a uh, bear. I would recommend trying not to give this to a combat rogue uh, because they're probably going to have too much expertise with it, like we've mentioned before. Uh, this chest guard can be a temp item for Hunter, especially because they're lower on tier. Blood of the Old God is not horrible, but it's not on anyone's bis list. Um, Enhance is a spec that can make some use out of it because they pretty much always can use more hit. It's a little harder for other classes. You know, you could try and get it to a rogue, but this is not really a big item that people are going to care about very much. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty good for enhance. Maybe something for a rogue. Maybe a physical DPS that is really struggling with their uh, their hit situation. Okay. Um, Earthshaper, this is not the worst mace ever for something like a red or, um, but it's got a lot of hit, so not, not amazing. Okay, next we have Treads of the False Oracle. These boots are amazing and are bis for a lot of classes. They are bis for Ellie Shaman. Uh, yeah, bis for Ellie Shaman, Restoration Shaman, Boomy, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin, but they're also tied to Bis for Mages, um, very close to Bis for Warlocks and Shadow Priests as well. So basically everyone kind of wants these to some degree. I would recommend making sure that these go to, I do think this is a good option to potentially give to an Ellie first because they can't use the Spirit Boots. Um, so this would be a good option for an Ellie. The other best options are, um, you know, also, there's, a, there's another pair of Spirit Boots from 10 Man that is at least viable for some of these other specs, if not, um, you know, pretty decent. Uh, it is Star Collar or Starlight Treads. These ones are actually very good for a lot of casters that can use the crit, but because they have Spirit, they're not as good for the Ellie. So Ellie is a great candidate to get these False Oracle Boots. Um, Fire Mage is a good candidate as well. Boomy is another good candidate also. Uh, so your Shadow Priest, your Affliction, your Arcane Mage, they all could go for this boot, but they prefer the one from Flame Leviathan if they had the choice, but they're so close, you could definitely give it to one of them too. I would not give these boots to typically any healers though um, until very late. Your Holy Paladins and your Resto Shamans both have male MP5 boots they can use that 252 and the rest of your healers have a lot of spirit options they can go for. All right, let's talk about Leggings of Cunning Deception. This is potentially one of the most difficult items uh, on the Pryo. Um, they are very, very, very good. And the problem is most legs are just horrible. Take, for example, Feral Druid. Feral Druid is potentially losing like 150 DPS if they don't get this. Uh, if they have the next best leg and, and they have to try and like move around tier to make it work and try and use tier leg, which they might not even be getting tier leg because it's not bis for them. They're pretty late on tier leg. So basically, I mean, you're looking at potentially a two, 300 DPS increase right as they get them. Um, and, and sometimes upward 150, 200 DPS, even later in the phase upgrade if they get these. Huge for Feral. Also huge for Warrior who also can see 100, 150 DPS increase from this item. Likewise, Hunters can get around 100 DPS from this. When it comes down to it again, give it to a deserving player. This is a pretty big item, pretty contested item. Um, you know, one of the most contested items. It is Bis for Warrior, Hunter, and Druid, um, as well as Rogue. Rogue should definitely go last. The tier legs for Rogue is pretty good. And combat can easily run four set, and assassination can easily run uh, two set with with leg. Um, so uh, they'd have to move some things around, but definitely rogues can make this work uh, without needing this leg. So it's definitely feral, 
Warrior, and Hunter as the top three. Now, the thing that makes it a little more complicated is it matters uh, how many players are on plated leggings of ruination. If your guild does not have very many DPS DKs um, or, or rep paladins, then the plated legs of ruination might go to warrior sort of soon. If that is the case, warriors should go lower. However, if you've got a lot of death knights in your guild, warriors are not going to be seeing that leg for a long time. They really don't have a very good alternative. Their tier leg is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um, even though they're more likely to get it sooner, it is completely horrible. So with all of that said, I would put rogue as fur or sorry brother feral druid is first prio just behind it is warrior just behind it is hunter again feel free to edit the order based on your guild but hunters can potentially pick up a tier leg pretty early because their token is pretty uncontested uh, warrior could do the same but warrior's tier leg in my opinion is worse than the hunter leg by a lot it can be very difficult to use the hit um and the expertise on the warrior tier leg, it, it, it can be abysmal. If you're playing arms, expertise is not very good uh, because if you dodge, you could have overpowered anyway. So it's not very good. And if you're playing fury, it's really easy to get too much hit. So no matter what, those legs are really bad. So I would go feral, slightly behind them warrior, slightly behind them hunter, then rogues after that. Both combat and assassination, I'd put equal afterwards. Notice we haven't mentioned bear. I think this is too contested of an item for bear to pick up early, even though it is on bear's bis list. Um, so I would recommend not, not considering bear on this one. Tough item though. All right, next we have seal of the betrayed king. Now on paper, this is another situation where DKs gain more than ret. Feel free to give this to ret first if their rings suck, if they haven't gotten as much. But yeah, frost and unholy before ret. And then arms, it is on their bis list. Um, but they gain less. They have more ring options than these other classes. And uh, yeah, Fury, it is not on their bis list, but it is usable for Fury too. They could get it even after that. Okay, next we have Show of Faith. This is a healer trinket, has 158 spell power. Uh, each time you cast a spell, there's a chance you'll gain mana. This is fine on any healer except Holy Paladin. Do not give this to a Holy Paladin. They don't need it. They have Darkman Guard Greatness. They have Soul Preserver for some fights. They have a new trinket from uh, Ten Man that gives intellect and some mana thing going on. Uh, so they do not need this. So give it to a non a deserving non healer. This is a pretty nice increase for a healer. So give it to a deserving healer that is not, uh, you know, a holy paladin. Cool. Next we have Dark Edge of Depravity. Now technically, this is bis for a bear. And this is technically this for blood decay on some lists. I would heavily discourage you against prioing this to a blood decay. They're going to get a lot of gear. We already talked about they're getting quick tier. They're going to gear up fast. I don't think it's worth giving them a spear when they scale so poorly. They do no damage. Blood decays don't do any damage. They don't have threat issues. They do not need a big spear like this. If anything, they're pretty happy dual wielding two, uh, two tank weapons because uh, they just need stat sticks and all they have to worry about is getting parry hasted on Thorim or the Cat Lady. As long as they switch out their weapon, they should be fine. But yeah, Dark Edge of Depravity is, uh, yeah, I wanna just counter that. I don't think it should be going to a Blood Decay. Um, now, who should it be going to? It is Bis for Bear. And so you could give it to Bear first um, if you've got a bear. After that, it is second bis for arms. It is very close to bis for arms. I think arms would be a great candidate for this. Um, I think arms should sit on this for a while. It is within, I believe the same idea was like within like 30 DPS of bis if you're able to move around the hit. Uh, so very good for arms and definitely not at all um, a bad item for arms. I wouldn't even consider it like, oh, second bis. It's very close to bis for arms. Um, and then of course uh after that you're looking at maybe a feral to take this um ret did not ret doesn't super love this ret can also take it um they don't super love this item though they're typically gonna have way too much hit it's gonna mess up their gear 
They're going to have to take off some really good hit items. In Rhett's Biss, they use a hit helmet. They use a hit uh, a ring that's really good. They might have to start taking those off because they get too much hit from this. So um, you can give it to a Rhett, but I would typically check and see if your Feral Cat could use it first uh, instead. Uh, Feral Cat can move around hit and try and make this work. It is not Biss. It's not even super close to Biss because Feral Cats really need armor pen. Uh, so if your Feral Cat does want to pass, that's fine as well. Because ultimately they really just want the armor pen from Dreambinder, which is, is quite a bit better than Dark Edge for them. If they happen to need hit, um, early it could work, but man, they really need the armor pen. All right, the last thing I will talk about is actually Valinir. We haven't mentioned Valinir. My Valinir prio is very simple. Um, you don't give it to a Disc Priest, and that's because it's basically worthless on a Disc Priest. Uh, you just get the stats in the item. You wouldn't get very, well, you get basically no value from the proc. You need your Disc Priest to be shielding, and they've gained so little from like the initial heal of a, a Power Word shield uh, it doesn't count the absorb. It's, it's only the initial heal of it. It's basically worthless on a disc priest. So do not give this to a disc priest. Even if your disc priest is trusted, even if your disc priest is a great guy, say, you know what? You've been in the guild for a long time. You're a great guy. You know what? Here, have tier early. Oh, you know what? Here, have show of faith first. You know, um, you know, maybe a staff uh, from Hodier. Yeah, maybe they get the Endless Winter staff. Maybe they get um, Constellus. It just doesn't make sense for them to give Valinir. It, it's just a waste of the item. With that said, I do think that the rest of the healers are all good candidates for Valinir. And even though there's some situations where um, Holy Paladin would be better with Valinir for keeping up tanks, and some argue that Resto Druids would be better with Valinir to keep up the raid uh, against raid healing, um, you know, Resto Shaman is kind of a hybrid of both. The thing I would say with Valinir is when it comes to legendary weapons, and this is always going to be my philosophy, I don't think it's a good idea to nitpick on minor details. I don't consider it a minor detail that disc does not work with the item at all. I think that's a major detail. Um, but when it comes to the minor details, uh, I do not think it is worth nitpicking through, well, in this situation, it's more likely Holy Paladin would gain more. Da, 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 da. When it comes down to it, if you've got people in your guild that are deserving of a legendary item, I believe they should at least have a chance to roll on it. So if you have two dedicated healers that are great, one's a Resto Shaman, one's a Holy Paladin, I personally would feel better, at, even as the Holy Paladin, rolling for the item, um, you know, versus it just going to me, if I felt the other person was deserving. Because it just, it, it's better... Uh, that both say, you know what, hey, 50-50, whoever gets it, gets it, we roll, versus, you know, having to deal with the drama of making a decision that you may not even have reason to make, right? If, if you have two healers that are so close together and you're deciding based on class or spec when both players are deserving, that's kind of lame. It's kind of lame. I, I think that's unfair. I think legendary items are given to the player, not the class, the player, not the spec. But of course, just like a legendary bow, who wouldn't really make sense to go to like a rogue, for example, it doesn't really make sense to give Valinir to a disc. So besides disc, give it to your most worthy healer. That can be Holy Priest. That can be Resto Shaman. That can be Holy Paladin. That can be Resto Druid. Okay, there we have it. That's everything. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions, any feedback. I will have the spreadsheet in the description below um you know and i will have keep that up to date in case i made any typos or anything like that um but yeah description check that for the spreadsheet check that for the loot uh the tier uh, information on what all these classes do keep in mind this is just my 10 man prior at the bottom don't have to follow that for 25 see the individual items for the 25 prio. But that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Um, you know, whatever you're supposed to do, like, whatever. Oh, you guys saw Angela Lansbury. Sorry about that. 
Angela Lansbury's my desktop background. I'm a big fan of hers. Not in a weird way. Uh oh, should we cut off the end here? I'm not weird, guys. I'm just a fan of hers. What are right, I guess I gotta leave that in. I don't have time to edit this. I gotta go to sleep. Anyway, take care, guys. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video and subscribe, follow my Twitch in the description and all that stuff.